What a delight to see such a crowd today. Thank you, Alex. And good afternoon. It's truly my pleasure to welcome you to Solve at MIT. Thank you so very much for joining us. You collectively represent an impressive assortment of human creativity. Scientists and social entrepreneurs, artists and activists, makers and policy makers, leaders in business and leaders in the business of hope. But what's more remarkable, most remarkable, is what you represent together and what unites this diverse group is a shared passion for working with others and for applying your creativity to make a better world. And that is the vital work we come together to tackle today. Let me begin with some important thank yous to the many people who have helped Solve come to life. First, our gratitude to all our Solve advisors, some of whom will take the stage this afternoon. We're also deeply grateful to our generous sponsors and partners, General Motors, Flagship Pioneering, the Mohammed bin Rashid Initiative for Global Prosperity, the Patrick J. McGovern Foundation, Atlassian Foundation, the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Inter-American Development Bank, and X. And I offer a very special thank you to Seoul's Executive Director, Alex Amuyel, and to the remarkable staff she has assembled for putting together this week's event and for transforming Seoul from a promising prototype into a powerful device for connecting people from around the world and to, for taking on the pressing problems on society. And finally, I want to thank the Solve community and all the solvers, as well as the recently named Okitashakowin Fellows for the initiative, creativity, and perseverance that brought each of them here today. Since we have brought you together for an event called Solve at MIT, I will say just a few words about each of those elements, about MIT, about Solve, and about you. For those of you just getting to know MIT, this is a community that wants to do good for the world. That may sound pretty idealistic, but it's right there in our mission statement. Advance knowledge, educate students, and bring knowledge to bear on the world's great challenges for the betterment of humankind. On our campus, that mission has created a deep culture of practical, practical problem solving and a pervasive commitment to serve society. And yet we know very well that MIT is not the only place with such a skilled and gifted community of problem solvers who want to do good. And we understand with the greatest humility that even the most brilliant technologists and scientists cannot make progress against the most serious global challenges alone. In fact, we recognize that many of the really big problems for our planet are global, and that most of them will require a combination of solutions that are local. So we came to see that to really make a difference, we needed to connect with new partners, with people who share our passion and drive to do good for the world. In fact, we believe that everybody, everybody should have a place at the problem-solving table. And that is how MIT came to develop SOLVE, an initiative designed to link together and cultivate a global community of solvers. But when all is said and done, the most important element is you. Some of you are SOLVE advisors or belong to official SOLVER teams. Most of you don't. But all of you are here, I believe, because you want to find a way to make a difference. 
Solve is deeply interested in the skills and knowledge you have to contribute. We are thrilled at the brilliant solutions so many of you have invented and hope to launch. And we have high hopes for your results. But as eager as I am to see your results, I'm also excited about Solve as a process. Let me explain. Sometimes in an industrial system, when you're busy trying to produce a certain product, the byproduct turns out to be just as valuable. And I want to focus you on one byproduct of Solve that is a perfect, priceless, renewable fuel for human progress. And that byproduct is trust. We live in a complex and confusing moment when lots of big things we used to take for granted seem to be uncertain, even in jeopardy. At the same time, however, humanity faces a great many important practical problems, the kind of problems our solve teams are focused on right now. How to create sustainable cities, how to battle the effects of brain disease, especially as people age, how to encourage women to thrive in technology, and how to help young people prepare themselves for the work of the future. As a society, we need to solve those problems and so many more, and we simply cannot do it without trust. The good news is that when people of goodwill work hard together to achieve an important solution, the byproduct is shared values, mutual respect, and trust. In other words, when you are solving something together, the process itself generates the vital fuel that it requires, and then some. At a moment when trust seems so rare, I'm thrilled that you're here to help us increase the global supply. And this is indeed a wonderful and powerful byproduct. This afternoon's panels will focus on bringing humanity back into technology, and I'd like to offer a brief reflection on how we think about these issues at MIT. As an institution, we believe deeply in the power of technology as a force for good. But we also believe in looking squarely at the facts. And the fact is that from robotics and sensors to gene editing and artificial intelligence, the current rapid advance of certain technologies has had and will continue to have significant impacts on society. Many of those effects will be wonderful, from more efficient transportation to better ways to defeat disease. But of course, there is no guarantee that today's technologies will evolve in ways that serve everyone. Every past technology wave delivered important gains from higher living standards and life expectancy to productivity and economic growth. Yet many fear that this time, the changes may be so fast and so vast that the impacts so uneven and disruptive, the impacts being so uneven and disruptive, that they may threaten not only individual livelihoods, but the stability of society itself. Fortunately, this outcome is not inevitable, and the future is in our hands. We know that tomorrow's technologies will transform our work, our lives, our society. Whether the outcome is inclusive or exclusive, fair or less fair, is up to us. Technologies embody the values of those who make them. It is up to those of us advancing new technologies to help make certain that they do not wind up damaging the society we intend them to serve. And in this work, we're very grateful to be able to learn from and work with all of you engaged in SOLVE. Let me close by turning our attention where it most belongs, on our solvers and our SOLVE fellows. These brilliant innovators and the bright sparks of their ideas are the light that inspires us. They will all have a chance to share their stories and their solutions this week. And I hope many of you will get the chance to know them. 
But for now, I'd like to invite on the stage a representative of each of this year's sober teams, as well as the Okedi Shakuwin Fellows, so that we can recognize and thank them here today. And it's also an opportunity for us to be truthful to take a photograph. So please come on stage and join me, representative for each of the Solver teams. And I ask now that the rest of us join together in celebrating these inspired problem solvers and then join together in delivering their best solutions to the world. Solvers, please come on stage. 